welcome to Fortnite Chapter 6 Season 1 Hunters. Let's break down all of the biggest changes that affect competitive play. Firstly, with a new season comes a new map, biomes, and a whole load of POIs, ranging from bustling cities to secluded suburbs. One of the power POIs for competitive players will be Demon's Dojo, a mountaintop sanctuary and home of the Night Rose. Once eliminated, she drops her Night Rose medallion, which automatically reloads equipped weapons over time, even when shooting, giving you a bit of extra juice or the ability to have your weapons at the ready at all times. The other medallion in the game is the Shogun X Medallion, which is incredibly strong, but a bit more difficult to acquire. When the Force Zone appears, the new Rift Island style Shogun Arena will spawn in. The boss that spawns here takes a long time to eliminate, so watch out for third parties. But once taken out, the boss will drop the Shogun X Medallion, which gives you unlimited stamina, and when you're sprinting, you're in a semi-invisible state, which is perfect for those risky endgame rotations. Now this is where things really start to get moving. Literally. There are four new movement mechanics this chapter ledge jumping, roll landing, wall scrambling, and wall kicking. Firstly, ledge jumping allows you to cover more distance when sprint jumping off a ledge. This is a great way to reach further away walls to mantle onto. Next, roll landing allows you to break your fall to the ground with a roll. The benefit of this is that you'll regain a little bit of that lost stamina from the sprint jump and can help you keep moving at a fast pace. Wall scrambling allows you to carry your sprinting momentum into a wall climb. This won't allow you to scale huge buildings, but does give you the ability to use stamina instead of builds when climbing over things. Finally, wall kicking is the new way to propel yourself off walls. You can use this to jump between walls and use that momentum to travel vertically up builds and buildings. This can be done for much longer than wall scrambling, so could make for some interesting height takes this season. Boons are a brand new addition into Chapter 6 and give you the ability to have a permanent buff for the duration of a match. There are four types of boons that can be found across the map. The air boon allows you to run slightly faster with your pickaxe equipped. The fire boon gives you a faster reload. The water boon regenerates both yours and nearby teammates health and shield while in water. And the void boon scans the area for other players when you get a knock. Beware, however, that although you can carry all four boons at once, you can't drop any to your teammates, and they do not drop once you pick up an elimination. So, choose wisely. Sprites are powerful new additions into Chapter 6 that can help change your game for the better. There are three types of sprites. The water sprite can be carried throughout a match, and when thrown down, it heals any nearby player's shield and health simultaneously for 50 of each. Very similar to how a shield keg works. Then, once this has finished healing, you can pick it back up and use it a further two times for a total of three charges per sprite. The air sprite is no doubt going to be a favorite amongst competitive players. Much like the water sprite, you can carry this in your inventory with three charges, and instead of healing, it produces a wind updraft which you can use to traverse across the map, just like a launch pad. This does also have three charges, however once you throw it down and fly away, the sprite stays put for another team to use the updraft or pick up the sprite for their own use. These sprites can also be used to unlock shrines across the map, which when unlocked provide you with great loot and a boon, making these shrines important for any team's loot path. The final and slightly larger sprite is the Earth Sprite. Feed this big guy one of your items and it'll give you consumables or a legendary weapon, depending on which category you feed it. This power is limited, however, as only two of these spawn in per match and can only be used a single time by one player. So, if you want this to be you, then act fast. Oni Masks are another brand new type of item in Chapter 6. There are two types that you can find across the map. Firstly, the Fire Mask allows you to shoot a slow-moving fire projectile, which deals low damage to builds, but a huge 100 damage to enemy players. This is incredibly powerful for competitive players, as combining this with a triple spray could result in some serious damage output from any range. The second is the Void Mask, and this allows the user to throw a Void Tear and teleport to it at any time before it despawns. This could be perfect for those difficult rotations in Endgame or to set up right before a fight and quickly escape if things go south. This will no doubt be a must-carry for competitive players this season. Both of these masks also have Mythic versions dropped by the Mythic bosses, which increases the number of charges that they have. The Typhoon Blade is a brand new item that comes in epic and mythic rarities and gives the user a great way to move around the map a lot quicker with the sprint and super jump features. 
When it comes to damaging players, you can use the Cyclone Slash to unleash a powerful wave of damage and knock back anyone nearby, the Swing, which turns the blade into a standard sword, and the Falling Strike, which allows you to crash land onto your opponents, dealing a hefty amount of damage. Also, the mythic version of this can be found by eliminating Shogun X. With a new chapter, of course, comes a whole bunch of new weapons. And unlike last season, these weapons do not require you to leave your shots, as they now have a hit scan and bloom model instead of bullet drop. The first new weapon is the Veiled Precision SMG. This is a classic SMG in terms of fire rate and damage, however, is quite accurate from distance, with the trade-off of significant damage falloff. The mythic version of this can be obtained at Demon's Dojo from the Night Rose and increases damage by one and has a slightly faster reload. Next is the Surge Fire SMG, which brings a brand new mechanic into how weapons operate. The longer you shoot this SMG for, the quicker it fires and more accurate it gets. This is going to be a great weapon for those that like to spray and pray. We all know one. Moving on to the shotguns, we have the Sentinel Pump Shotgun, which operates much like a traditional pump, the Twin Fire Auto Shotgun, which has 12 shots in the mag and is very similar to the old Drum Shotgun, albeit with a slower fire rate, shooting in a two-round burst, and an incredibly long reload time. Finally, the Oni Shotgun will be the weapon of choice for those that like to play from distance. With two rounds in the barrel and an incredibly long range with little damage drop-off, this is very similar to how the Ranger Shotgun worked in seasons prior. Finally, for the new weapons, we have the Assault Rifles. Firstly, the Fury Assault Rifle is a familiar feel for all Fortnite players, bringing a good balance of range, damage, and fire rate. This is a classic AR that everyone will understand. The other rifle this season is the Hollow Twister. This includes a hollow scope baked in, as we no longer have weapon mod benches. This AR is more of the heavy style of weapon, with a slightly slower fire rate but higher damage, making this a perfect surge weapon for trios this season. For versatility, you can also switch between the first person scope and the third person view for this weapon, allowing multiple styles of play. With so many changes this chapter, we can't wait to see how you elevate your gameplay with the new items and mechanics. Jump in, experiment, and get ready. The FNCS returns soon.